hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. This is the story of Borneo Devil Beast. Through swampy forest tracks that foot a Borneo mountain range, the Beatties plod in quest of a most unusual species of monkey, Nazalis larvatus, the proboscis monkey. After two tepid weeks so near the equator, which halves this huge island of the Java Sea, they were almost ready to resign themselves to the fact that there were none of the long-nosed creatures about. Clyde. Yeah, honey? There is such a thing as a proboscis monkey, isn't there? We wouldn't be going through all this if there weren't. Couldn't we just take home some plain old ordinary ones, like the organ grinders use? <laughs> we could have made a safari into the jungles of New York City if we wanted organ grinder monkeys for our Fort Lauderdale Zoo. But, darling, we've already sent a whole shipload of animals back from the East Indies. Is it absolutely necessary for us to have one of those borny old Jimmy Durante? Sweetheart, we can't make many expeditions to this part of the world. While we're here, we might as well get a few of the critters. All I can see is if those monkeys are stupid enough to live in a place like this... They don't deserve to be taken to a heavenly spot like Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Honey, <laughs> I should have shipped you home from Sumatra with that load of animals. I wish you had. That's this one. That's this one. Well, that's Muda. Maybe he spotted something while he was scouting around. If he did, I hope it's furry and has a long nose. Muda, over here. This is one. Muda, me. You find them big name. Him good to fill all the team. Make them camp along a big grass. Make them name Telebiti. One where go can find Longo Nosy Nose. Well, Muda, that's wonderful. Hooray. Now tell me what it was he was jabbering about. Muda found a native village nearby. The chief knows where he can find some proboscis monkeys. Oh, that is good news. Big name, take him Nosy Nose. Make him big boss, baby, one. Inside, glad. You bet that'll make me happy. Me too. All the same as Ashi. No easy do. What do you mean? Big name, say him, bring him Nosy Nose, chop, chop. Before first, though, baby, one. Get you much of Lago Mace. That sounds like bad news. Uh, it is. The chief will bring us big-nosed monkeys if we do a small favor for him first. Such as? Oh, nothing much. Just capture for him the Borneo Devil Beast. We will return to Clyde Beatty in just a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty's adventure... Borneo Devil Beast. Well, let's go catch this devil beast and get it over with, Clyde. Not so fast, my lovely. One just doesn't go out with a butterfly net to pick up those babies. Muda, pack every bit of rope we've got. Yes, baby, it's one. I want to inspect that netting before you roll it up, too. Okay, do it. Stop. <laughs> Sounds like Muda's be starting to pick up some Americanisms to go with his pigeon English. <laughs> Okie dokie, Sib. Who ever heard anything like that? And who ever heard of packing all that stuff just to capture a figment of some superstitious Malay's imagination? Oh, but the devil beast is no figment of imagination. Then there is such a thing? And how? He's over five feet tall with tremendous arms that reach to his ankles. He's covered with long, bright red hair. That's where the devil idea comes in, and not Clyde, a... you're making this up. He's a tough mm. customer. Sometimes he gets a bit peevish and starts throwing things, like a limb of a tree big enough to knock your head off. The Dyaks call this red-haired giant the Omice, or Man of the Woods. What do you call him? Orangutan. Oh, we're going after a monkey. Not a monkey, honey. An ape. Monkey, ape? What's the difference? Only about five feet and 400 pounds. Mm, I see. But what I don't understand is, if Mr. Big Chief wants to get rid of this beast, why can't you just shoot it instead of capturing it? That bothers me, too. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's go have a talk with this big name. That's quite a confab mood is having with the chief and his board of directors. From here, I'd say the board of directors is controlled by Madam Big Name. Sounds like the chief doesn't have as much to say as his wife. Uh oh, they're coming over here. It's about time. Uh, Mother, make a long old talky talk with big name. You just ain't whistling Dixie, son. Mother, no, sorry, son. Oh, skip it. Do these two speak pigeon? Way for no talky American. Big name, him talking very good, like Mother. (laughs) He speaks American as good as that, huh? Well, then, what's the deal, chief? Long old maze. Devil him. Smash him camp. 
Hurt them all, team, good fellow. I see. Well, if the devil beast always smashes up your camp and hurts your men, why don't you kill it? Mm, no can do. No can do. Why not? You have guns. Me long go musket have him. Devil him walk about. No kill him long musket. No, no. But why? Uh, Bruta her. Bruta, how long go young? What's your wife saying? Bruta wefu. Him do long go sleep. Oh, so your wife's brother is dead. Well, what's that got to do with it? Bruta. Mm, me no like it. Him make a malo team bad weather. No good him. No good him. One shan, one the one shan, one shan. Now, wait, wait a minute. What's this all about? Devil. Him brute away fool. No, let him kill him. What? What are they saying? The devil beast is the chief's brother-in-law. That's ridiculous. Not to the Dyaks. You see, honey, they believe in all sorts of spirits and things. I know, but... Mm, devil smash him camp. Hurt him all team. Brute away for him. Come back, camp. Come back, camp. What's that? The orangutan's been taking pics at the chief, so he figures the ape is his brother-in-law come back from the dead to pester him. Right, Muda? That's so. That's so. Well, in that case, I should think the chief would have even more reason for killing the creature. Ah, but you've forgotten about the little wife. Wife, oh, no, let him big name kill him, Bruta. Oh, brother. <laughs> oh, brother is right. Look, dear, we could talk to these people for a month and we'd never be able to convince them that the orangutan is just an ordinary animal. I suppose you're right. Now, if we want to get our little monkeys and get out of here, we'd better help the Dyaks capture their devil beast. You're the boss. Muda, tell the chief we'll help them. Yes, but it's one. Put it on the Isn't this going to be sort of a dangerous job? Oh, no more so than most of the other captures we've made. Oh, I don't know. There's something about this whole thing that bothers me. I wish you'd call it off. We can't do that now. We've promised the chief. Well, call Muda back and tell him we've changed our minds. It'll be all right, honey. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, don't worry. It... Ah, here comes Muda. Muda. Uh, Muda, tell him big name. All those things. Okie dokie. Great. Let's get started. Please, Todd, let's get out of this. Honey, we've captured gorillas and chimps in Africa. This orangutan won't be any tougher. I know, but I've got a feeling we're asking for trouble. It may take a few days to do this job, Harriet, but believe me, if we use every precaution, it'll be easy as falling off a log. And I still don't like it. Look, I've always respected your woman's intuition about things, but this time I think you're being over-anxious about this so-called devil beast. It's not just the animal, Clyde. No? No. Then what... Uh, Oh, those people over there. The Dyaks? Well, they're perfectly innocent, harmless natives. Pardon, please, Sab. Now what, Muda? Muda think Missy Bicky, right? Muda think it's too much extra work to go out after that ape. That's what Muda thinks. Clyde. Now look here, you two. You know I'm not usually so heavy-handed. But I know when you're out in country like this, you're liable to get a lot of strange notions. It's my duty to take care of you, and I will. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Of course you're right. I shouldn't be questioning your judgment. Thanks, honey, and I'm sorry if I sounded a little rough. Uh, one thing, Betty Twang. You again. Mother not tell side. One thing, big name him say. Well, what did he say? Him say, warning. Warning? Yes. You, no kill him, double beast. Well, I don't intend to, but of course if we get in a spot, I may have to take a shot at him. To... Him say, you kill him, double beast. Big name, kill him you. <laughs> Clyde Beatty will continue with his story in a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty and Borneo Devil Beast. The Beatty's Borneo adventure started out to be a rather dull search for strange little monkeys with noses that hang down over their chins. However, they suddenly found themselves involved in a hunt for bigger games. The Devil Beast, a giant, red-haired, man-like ape who made his home in the Borneo treetops. Well, it looks like we're in for it, honey. What did the chief say? I had Muda tell him we decided against going after the orangutan. Just then we got pelted with durian. They hurt, too. What in heaven's name are durian? Oh, a fruit that grows in those trees over there. They're covered with a leather-like skin and full of sharp spines. Darling, your face is all bruised. Of course, it's no fun getting socked with a durian. The Dyaks are going too far. Oh, it wasn't the natives. It was the orangutan. You mean it... It was up in the trees and it started throwing things? That's right. He's one of the meanest, roughest critters I've ever seen. Usually an orang won't bother about things like that. This guy's different. No wonder they think he's the chief's brother-in-law. Right. The Dyaks want to get rid of him, but... Of course, Mama Chief won't let him be killed. That's why they insist that we capture this one alive. Insist? Uh-huh. 
You mean if we don't... If we don't, the Dyaks are going to forget that they're peaceful citizens. Oh, I had a feeling about this. And you were right. But don't worry, honey. I've kind of got a grudge against that red devil, too. I'd like nothing better than to see him nice and safe in a good, strong cage. Then, let's get on with it. Right. Oh, Muda. Yes, sir. Tell the Dyaks to get started. Yes, sir. Um, what what happens first? Everybody starts swinging axes. Oh, axes? Sure, we got to chop down about 50 trees. 50 trees? Maybe even 100. I thought we were going to capture an ape, not go in the lumber business. <laughs> That's right. But an orangutan can move through the trees faster than we can run on the ground. So we... So we cut down an entire forest to keep him from running away? If we have to, honey. If we have to. Good heavens. It makes me exhausted just watching those poor diets chop those trees. Oh, they're used to working in this climate. They're as anxious as we are to capture the red ape. Muda tells me the creature's got the chief so upset he's been taking it out on everybody in the tribe. Look at that poor fellow over there. He can hardly stand. Harriet, Harriet, did you see that? It was like a ball of flaming color. It flashed from the tree, seemed to strike the man and disappear. He's writhing in agony. Come on. Come on. His back. Look at his back. Oh, that poor devil. That, that was an awful blow. Oh, he's unconscious now. Muda, quickly, the first aid kit. Yes, sir. What can you do for him? I don't know. I'll have to examine him first. Muda, hurry. Coming, guys. Coming. Here, kid. Take this one. Good. Hurry it, open it. Right. Now help me here. You over there, hand me that crock of water. Muda, Muda, tell them to shut up. Yonga! Yeah, Yonga! Come on! Oh, that's a nasty wound. Mm, what made it? I don't know. Could, could it have been some sort of snake? No. No, it was something with jaws and teeth. Devil beast, come! It's the orangutan. He must have smelled the blood. Oh, he's throwing things. Yeah, durians again. You better get under cover. Hadn't we better move this fellow? Not until I finish. Then I'll stay and help. Why, well, you son of a gun. Oh, take it easy. I didn't aim at the big ape. I was just carrying him away. Tell him, Muda. A little more. There. I think we can move him now. Come on, you guys. Come here. Lift. The orangutan didn't scare very much. He swung over to that other tree. He's bearing down at us like a school teacher who just sat on a tack. Why, well, it take more than a few gunshots to scare that big old boy. Matter of fact, there isn't anything that can scare him. Easy there. That's a sick man you're carrying. Clyde, do you think the ape might have thrown something sharp that could have hurt this man? He could have, but it'd be lying around. Whatever it was, it seemed to be all different colors. It just disappeared after it struck him. I know. I've been racking my brain trying to figure it out. All right, Muda, put him down here. And cover him up. Good. Will the others go back to work after this? Sure, they're used to accidents like this. There are a lot of strange things happen in Borton. Strange things? Of course. What is it, Clyde? I just thought of the strangest thing of all out here. You mean, you know what happened to this man? Yeah, he was bitten by a Draco. What in the world are Dracos? An amazing type of lizard. Lizard? But how could a lizard jump so high? The Draco we saw didn't jump. He was flying. Now, just a minute. There may be monkeys with noses ten inches long and apes with hair as red as an Irish bricklayer, but don't tell me there are lizards here that can fly. It's a fact. The Draco's wings are colored like a rainbow. The rest of them has the protective coloring of the ground. When he flies, you see the flash of color. When he folds his wings, he seems to disappear. And... And they can bite like that? They can bite like that. That's all. Let's get that red-haired ape and get out of here. How long can this go on, Clyde? It won't be long, honey. That hairy ape is getting tired. He's getting tired? How about all those boys chopping those trees? Oh, they can take it. But it's so discouraging. Every time we just about get a space cleared around him, the devil beast swings over to another part of the forest and we start all over. Yeah, but for the last three days, we've had him in trees that can't supply him with food. He's getting starved. The man is a wet hen. Listen to him. Well, just wait till we get him isolated. He'll really tell us off. Well, as long as he doesn't demonstrate how strong those huge arms of his are, he can shatter his lungs out. Wait a minute. 
I think we've got him. Muda, Muda. Yes, Peter Chow. Get all the men chopping at that tree I've marked on the left and hurry. Now you see, the pattern we planned worked out perfectly. If we can get that one tree down before he moves for it, we've got him trapped. Oh, come on, boys. Chop, chop. We've caught the ape at the right time. He seems to be taking a rest now. I hope it's a long rest. Just a little more. A little more. More. There it goes. Timber! I hope he's got it. Good. Now, just one more tree. Listen to him. Tell us off. Never mind. Now comes the tough part. Do you mean cutting down half the jungle to Borneo wasn't the tough part? Uh-uh. Getting that big boy out of that lone tree and into the cage we've made is the really rough job. Oh, fine. And to think I could have married Horace Gilton Farber. Well, who's he? A bookkeeper, darling. A bookkeeper. <laughs> what? <laughs> Miss all this fun? Never. Him caught up tree. What do bet it want? Break out the ropes and the netting. Spread the netting under the tree so we can get it when it's needed. Yes, sir. Now, Harriet, take this rifle and keep me covered. What are you going to do? I'm going up the tree to lop off those lower branches. I have to clear the way so we can get the ropes on that critter and drag him down. Clyde, you're not climbing up that tree with a, with a devil in it. You don't expect me to ask one of the boys to do it. But the beast might attack you. If he does, don't miss with that rifle. If we kill the ape, what about the chief's threat? We'll worry about that later. Give me that hand axe, Muda. Yes, sir. Here I go. <laughs> I've got my eye on him. If he comes for me, I'll take the chance of dropping down. Look out below. One more will do it. Oh, honey, are you hurt? No. I dropped on those branches and broke the fall. Whew, I thought he had me there for a minute. Oh, he almost did. Look, your shirt's torn. Well, being close only counts when you're playing horseshoes. Muda, hand me those ropes. What are you going to do? Make like a cowboy. Now watch. You missed him. I expected to. If I know my apes, our hairy friend will grab that rope, and then I pull the noose tight. You were right. He grabbed it. Good. Grab the end, boys, and pull. That's got one arm. Here goes another rope. Oh, he's furious with rage. He grabbed the other rope. Look, the noose slipped up his arm and over his shoulder. Now, all together. Pull. Everybody, Pull. Pull! You've got the branch swaying up and down. Pull again! He's losing his hold! Here he comes! Ready with the net! Throw that netting all around him! Hurry, hurry! Good work! Good! He'll never get out of that! I hope! Muda! Muda, come here! Tell Big Name there's a cage and there's his devil beast and the rest is up to him! Yes, honey. When you were up in that tree and that red ape grabbed at you, if he'd caught you... Uh, let's not talk about that. Huh? Well, if he'd caught you, do you think the rifle you handed me would have stopped him from tearing you to shreds? Well, if you'd have smacked him with about five shots right between the eyes, maybe. Do you think I could have done it? Mm, no, I don't think anybody could have from that and angle. yet you went up that tree. Sure, honey, but gosh, we had to get that devil beast. Well, this island may be filled with long-nosed monkeys, red-haired apes, flying dragons. Yes. But until you get out of Borneo, there'll be another strange creature here. And it's called Clyde Baby. And now here is the star of our show, Clyde Beatty. Although I nearly had to chop down a forest to get him, it was a great thrill to be able to capture the Borneo Devil Beast alive. I'll bring you another thrilling adventure the next time we meet. stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced and transcribed by Shirley Thomas, written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Tausig. Music composed and conducted by Albert Glasser. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>